I'm Mel Stewart, and this is the Swim Sign Podcast. Joining me today, this man needs no introduction. This man is the king of king, the king of all kings in coaching. He's the defending NC2A champion at the University of Virginia, head coach Todd DeSorbo, Olympic coach, 2022 head coach for the women in Budapest. He's also a Triton Wear uh, board advisor, and uh, he's on the advisory board. And he's, um, he's, he's bringing data into his coaching, which is not a surprise. Most of the smartest coaches are. Uh, Triton Wear Tech unleashes your speed. Triton Wear helps you plan your best season. Press pause right now. Go over to tritonwear.com, tritonwear.com. Take a look at the site, and you'll understand the power of unleashing data as a coach. I get phone calls from coaches and I get test messages from coaches and they're upset because there's so much DeSorbo news. And my response, to, my response to them is simple. I'm like, guys, you know, I, we, we're, we're, we're a news platform. If you're successful, you're going to get coverage. And, um, and that usually ends the conversation. I'm not going to say who they are. So that there's no hard feelings, but it's, uh, this is a problem I have to manage. Can you give me another? Is there a better way than for me to manage that at Swim Swam? <laughs> you know, well, first of all, I get two things. One, I need you to be, I need you to, I need you to re-record the, your intro to me, or maybe I'll just, I'll record it later when it's posted and I'm going to wake up. That's going to be my alarm every day. <laughs> oh, you like that? Okay, you made me good. feel good. Yeah. Yeah. You hyped me up. That was good. Uh, yeah. Definitely probably more than I uh, should, should get. And then the other thing is, it's definitely not me. You know, you say the Sorbo news, but it's, it's, uh, it's what, you know, it's Virginia news, right? It's there. It's what the kids are doing. You know, they're the ones putting in the hard work. We're just, I, I'm just standing on deck, having a good time, smiling, having fun. You know, they're putting in the hard work and doing everything we ask them to do. So I said this when we had, you know, a handful of girls make the Olympic team, you know, and then, and then I, and then I was on staff, I was named a staff, right? That that's how it happens, right? The athletes do the work. And then I, you know, I was there because of them. It wasn't the other way around. So, um, you know, I, I give all credit to them. They're doing the work. They're, they're, they're the ones going through the pain and suffering. So <laughs> that's, 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 I appreciate it. Okay. Well, I, I, I think I, your I, response I, is great. You know, I don't know what, <laughs> you know, but I think that I'm sure that if, uh, you know, if you're successful, you get press, but also if you're not doing well, you get pressed too. I'm hoping to not, I'm hoping to stay on the, you know, the, the former side of that. And, and, I'll, and I'll say this to, to young coaches out there and, and, and I'll, you know, it's, this is a testament to coaches being so passionate about who they are, their team and what they're doing. And I appreciate that. It's never taken in a negative way, but if you would like to have a, a, a UVA tutorial, I'll give it to you this way. If, if something happens that isn't the, the best with, with Todd, Todd doesn't make any excuses. He just moves on and says, we're going to get it done in the pool. And if you're interfacing with your sports information person, uh, UVA has a really strong sports information department. And, and you guys do do a great job on social. You do do a great job in terms of just telling your story, which is so very important. A lot of schools are catching up and some do it really well. But um, so those are some some key things that you can do just to help your program and move into the future. Let's dive in. Uh, I would say it's, it's fair to say that, that you're a power program, you're leading a power program. And um, uh, that makes me jealous coming, being an athlete who trained in the 1980s and, and early 90s when we suffered and suffered and suffered. It'd been nice, you know, you like to play the dream game of what, what would have been like to swim with under Todd. And I think a lot of people are asking themselves that question. How would you describe your coaching and your program and your philosophy? Oh, man. Um, you know, I think a, a good bit of our, our coaching here is, is energy, you know, and, and I think a lot of people know that. Uh, but we have a coaching staff, in, in inclusive of me, that's just we love what we do and we're passionate about it. And, and so we really enjoy it. You know, we want to be surrounded, you know, when I'm building my staff here at Virginia, I wanted to be surrounded by people that I really enjoy being around. You know, when I was at NC State, I'll give Braden a shout out, you know, and I'll give him props. Like, 
he put together a staff that we didn't necessarily know each other or know it was going to be what it was, but we just really had a good time together and enjoyed each other, you know, on the pool deck and in the office constantly. And so, you know, I, I, you know, I was a CPA and, you know, before I was a swim coach and I quickly realized that I didn't, you know, I worked in public accounting and I was a tax consultant and I was doing corporate tax returns and all that kind of stuff. And I didn't, it wasn't, I wasn't super excited about it. You know, I liked the people I worked with, but it, the work wasn't necessarily exciting. Um, anyway, fast forward, you know, I wanted to, I wanted to be doing something I'm really excited to do every day and that I'm really excited to wake up and, and go to work every day. And then also, but, but part of that is the people you're around, right? The people you surround yourself with, are you enjoying them? You know, and I think our staff, you know, we really enjoy each other. We have a lot of fun together. Um, that bleeds over onto the pool deck, you know, and we really enjoy working with this with the student athletes that we have and have a really good time with them as well. So I think that's part of it. You know, that's that's part of the environment and and the way we coach. Outside of that, it's, you know, to me, you know, higher higher intensity training is more fun for me. Again, I'm about having fun. So it's more fun for me to coach those workouts. It's more fun, I think, for the athletes to hear we're going to go 10 50s all out instead of hearing we're going 10 300s all out. Um, I think there's a time and a place for that kind of thing. I certainly think you've got to do some things that aren't necessarily always fun, um, you know, and you got to work hard at it. But, you know, we try to make we try to just create a good balance between doing enough, um, you know, aerobic stuff, threshold stuff to where people can have a great 4 IM or 500 free or mile or even their 200s. But I kind of take the approach that, Every day's race day, first off. And then second, we always want to be sharpening the knife, right? We don't ever, we always want to be sharpening the blade. We don't ever want to be dulling it. And I think that there's a fine balance between too much aerobic work and, and that will maybe dull the knife a little bit. Um, and, you know, so you get it over the years and it's, and it's still a process. And I think they're still working on it is, you know, finding out how much of one can you do compared to the other that's going to maybe take away from one or the other. So it's a, it's a constant experiment. Um, but it's definitely, you know, we take that, we take the, I have a motto with our staff, protect their speed. And, and so I want everybody, whether you're coaching a miler or a 50 freestyle or anything in between, we always want to be developing speed and power. I, I heard something in there that I didn't know. It's new information. I didn't know that you were a CPA. I did not know that. I mean, is that, is that, is this something you talk about? Do you, do you, do you say, Hey, I'm, I used to be a CPA. I mean, That's not only when people ask me like about my path into coaching, um, I, you know, it's, it's, a, it was a little bit unorthodox. I mean, I got my master's in accounting and passed the CPA exam and did that. And, and I worked for one of the, the largest actually public accounting firm in the world, Deloitte and Touche back then. Now it's just Deloitte, but, um, and I loved it. You know, I liked, well, I didn't love it. I liked it. That's, that was the problem. I didn't love it. Um, but so for a long time after that, I was doing a lot of friends and family tax returns. Um, but I got out of all, I'm not doing any of that anymore. <laughs> this is what, this is what I'm hearing from you. It's, this is a unique skill set when you're, when you're coming into coaching, because there's, if you're, if you own a business or you're some coach or you're uh, just in life there, there's, there is this perception and this feeling that things are going well. And you feel and think, and you tell yourself you're being disciplined and you're doing all the, especially when it comes to money, when it comes to managing budgets and uh, this dovetails into coaching and, 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 it, and it, it's applicable to athletes. Cause we, the truth is our own ego is saying one thing, but the actual hard numbers tell us something else. And, uh, and I think that's why uh, data is going to be so transformative in SWIM, I think, and, and Triton, we're so far ahead of everybody. And, and that's part of the reason why we, we partnered with them at SWIM SWAM was, it was like, wow, this is a, this is a Ferrari in this marketplace. It's so powerful. Um, anyway, let's focus the conversation. Let me, let, there's a question in that. Do you think being an accountant moving into coaching helped you? Yeah. Well, you know, I, I, I'm definitely, a, I'm a numbers person. Um, and so I'm all about the statistics, um, the times, like I can't, I can't say the ABCs uh, through from A to Z at all, but I can remember my times from when I was 10 years old um, in my races. And so I can remember all of our team members times and what they did last week and what they need to do today. 
um, you know, I think from that perspective, it's certainly, it, you know, it's, it's been, it's beneficial. I'm, I'm the kind of person, if I see a number, I'm not going to forget it. Uh, now, if you tell it to me verbally, I'm going to forget it, but if I see it, I won't, but that's why the clock is so great. Right. Cause I see the time and, and I know it. Um, so yeah, I think that certainly think it's helped me from, you know, from that perspective and maybe is one of the reasons why I'm so intrigued by the data side of it as well. Um, you know, because it's, it's all, it's all numbers, obviously. Um, this past summer we saw, uh, this was the summer of Popovich, David Popovich, and we saw what he was doing. He was, uh, loading and unloading volume all summer long, um, at a power program, how are you unloading and loading without a component of a volume? Yeah, well, there's not a whole lot of unloading. Um, it's pretty much constant loading. Um, you know, it's kind of like, it, it, it's, it's almost like a weight room approach, right? You're always loading um, and, and you're always progressing, you know, but you, you obviously have to be careful with that too, because you'll, you'll, you know, you don't want to, again, it, I think if you do too much speed and stuff too, you're also going to dull the knife, right? There is a balance between that. You can't just do it and do it and do it. Um, you know, you've got to, the, the approach that I take is more like, I, I want them to be fast, you know, pretty much all the time. Um, and so if we get accustomed to their training ability and they're at, and they're at a certain level in training, you know, we want to, we want to stay at that level or get faster in training. And if they're, if they ever go the other way, then we're doing too much. And so then, then we might unload. Um, but, you know, we, we want to, we don't, um, the hope is to never get to that point where we need to unload and we need to recover. It's just, con you know, it's consistent. Um, it's consistent loading, consistent breaking down just enough of the muscle to take a step back, to take two steps forward when it kind of, when it rebuilds. It's, uh... but I, it, it's certainly probably it's very different than, you know, a volume based training program. A lot of coaches see their athletes. They see them swimming in the water. They see their, their, their position in the water and they just know, yep. is, is there a, is there, is there a data point or a Triton where data point where you're looking at it? You're like, I'm seeing this in the water and I'm also seeing this in the, in, in the data. Oh yeah. Oh, for sure. Um, I think one of the things that has been most beneficial with the Triton where is, is exactly that uh, it's confirming that, it's, you know, sometimes I'm like, I don't know. I have no, I see, I'm seeing this, but I have no idea if what I'm seeing is actually right. Or if what I'm telling them is actually right. Um, and the data just confirms that, oh yeah, I was actually right. I kind of know what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, you know, I think, I think that something I like about the data the most is the fact that it's confirmation that you're doing the right things. Um, you're telling them the right things. What you, what you're seeing is actuality. And, you know, what you're perceiving is that is what you think you're actually are perceiving and the data is confirming that, but also allowing us to know, are we getting better at that? There's something that I see with, um, with great coaches, talented coaches, coaches who are, who are, who, who are attracting elites and who are doing the job. I see there's two sets of them, two different, two different groups. Some coaches, uh, are, are they it's pedal to the metal the yard season is there the work that's being done is extraordinary and they keep that going through the the long course season they keep it going into the olympic size pool some coaches do not you see them take their foot off the gas you don't see the attention to detail and it shows up in their athletes performance um, that's not the case with you it's um very clearly your athletes are moving out of their their NC2A season into the long course season and they're making gains. Um, you know, what, what are you doing? How are you managing that? How are you managing the long course sprint training into your, excuse me, the short course sprint training into your long course sprint training? Yeah. I mean, and I will say that it wasn't always that way. I think that, you know, I haven't been coaching like that long, um, you know, as a head coach, five years, as a, as a coach, about 15 years, which, which in the grand scheme of things is not nearly as long as a great Troy or a Jack Bowerly and, and guys like that. Um, so definitely a lot of mistakes early on, specifically transitioning from short course to long course, a lot of experimenting, um, you know, and, and, and we're continuing to experiment and continuing to try to figure, you know, not necessarily figure it out, but figure out how to keep getting better from that perspective. 
Um, but I think the approach that we've taken, you know, gent more broadly is just, um, you know, just using the short course season as a catalyst towards long course. Um, and, and more recently in the last few years, the, with the with the bigger goal of transitioning towards international success, you know, is is using the NCAA season as motivation, um, you know, and a, a a very positive, beneficial distraction to long course goals. Because um, I don't think that you know, like spending an entire year focused on the Olympics is necessarily a good thing because it just gets in your head, you're thinking about it nonstop. And so we, so the college season is a great distraction. Like you're still working really hard, but you're really motivated, right? And you're really excited to help your team. It's an, you know, the, the college season is, is exciting and it's fun, um, you know? And so we just use the school year through NCAAs to, um, you know, allow them to keep excited, to keep motivated, to keep focused on, the team's goals. And then once we get through NCAAs, all right, now it's obviously it's a little bit more of an individual perspective when you leave NCAAs and you go towards an Olympic trials or world champ trials or whatever it might be. But, but it's a very short window at that point. So you don't have to be focused for a year. You just have to be, you just have to continue to be focused for another two, three months, just depending on what the timeline is there. Um, you know, that's kind of been a big catalyst towards, you know, being able to maintain that success throughout um, and, and also making sure that we're developing through the, through the college year, college season, long course as well as short courses. We're not going to just train short course the entire time. Um, but, you know, just using, using information to get better at what the ultimate goal is, is long course, but keeping their mind off of it a little bit and, you know, putting it on the coaches a little bit more. Hey, you let me worry about what you need to get better at. You just do what I ask you to do and you'll be fine. You know, you put, you, you, we frame this through the lens of the Olympics and, and that's really not fair because we, you know, you're head coach of the women's uh, world championship team, team USA. And, uh, and the summer wasn't over. Uh, we had, we had a, we had a, we had national championships and at national championships, your athletes performed, uh, Gretchen, I feel like she had to, it, from the outside looking in as a fan, as, as someone who's, who's running a media company watching her career, it's like she needed to get over the hump. She needed some psychological wins. And that happened this summer. But the most interesting performance was probably Matt King. Uh, what was his personal best? He was like a 22 6. I, I, I'm, this is from memory 50 free, and he dropped to a 21 8. He was a 49 plus, dropped to a 48 3. Those those PBs were both, you know, in uh, U.S. national championship titles. Uh, can, can you talk about what he what he was doing at, at U.S. Olympic trials and the transition from what we see at U.S. Olympic trials compared to 2022 summer nationals? We're actually going to throw some a comparison race video up here. Yeah. Um, you know, I think, interestingly enough, the. If you when you look at the videos of those two races, his his 21 trials to his 22 summer nationals, his stroke count is very, very similar. It, it might be exactly the same, actually. Maybe it maybe it's one stroke different, um, which, you know, would, would tend to be surprising um, when you drop that much time. His best hunter free was like 49, like 49 high, like 49, eight or nine or something, maybe 49, seven. And he dropped to 48, three. So, um, you know, it's, we spent a fair amount of time post college season, um, you know, working on some things that I was hoping would transition well to his races. Um, and honestly, the, the, the emphasis was more, wasn't necessarily about long course, uh, to be quite honest with you, the emphasis was more about, I mean, we wanted to perform really well long course. I knew he could be, he's capable of a lot more, but I, I used, I put it in terms for those guys of, Hey, the things that we're going to focus on are going to, are really centered around making our four by 50 freestyle relay faster, short course. Um, cause our guys kind of came out of nowhere and broke the American record, you know, in the 200 free relay. Um, we didn't win NCAAs, uh, you know, we're a few tenths off the, the all, you know, uh, the elusive Auburn 200 free relay NCAA record. Um, and so, Hey, I've got five guys. They're all pretty similar that could be on the relay. 
but and they all need to work on very specific things that are pretty much the same. Um, they're they're all not necessarily great underwater. Um, they you know, it, and that was the biggest thing was just really push offs underwater through the breakout. That that was a big focus. C- c- compare that. I, I don't want to throw them under the bus, but compare their underwaters to your women's underwaters. Yeah. Well, it's hilarious actually. Um, and it, and it was, especially because at, at ACC's last year was where both the women and the men broke the, the American record in the 200 free relay and they did it back to back heats, right? Like the women got up and did it, you know, a heat later, the men got up and did it and they are 180 opposites, uh, 180 degree opposites. All the girls are kicking out to maybe 15 meters, definitely 15 meters on the start, close to it on the turn. They're, they're world-class underwater. Um, the guys, on the other hand, you know, one of them, Matt Brown said, is pretty good underwater. He utilizes it. The other three or four that I have are like, you know, I want them like skipping across the surface as quick as they can. Um, you know, two dolphin kicking it up because they're just not necessarily, they're just, they're not elite underwater. They're elite on the surface. Um, you know, arguably the best swimmers in the country on the surface, but short course swimming is obviously really different, right? You got to, you need to be good underwater. Um, so that was something we wanted to focus on in addition to just stroke, you know, their, their efficiency and their stroke. Um, not, you know, they, they swam fast, obviously, but uh, in my mind, I was like, we need one tenth. we need one tenth per person faster, which doesn't seem like a lot, but in a 50, it obviously it is, especially when you're already that fast, when you're splitting 18, two, 18, three, going a 10th faster is, is a lot. So our goal was to try to find a 10th between push-offs to breakouts, um, as well as just maybe being a little bit more efficient. So we used, so all of this was based around that goal. Um, and the hope was it would just transition into their swimming as well. And, and we'll see what they do at the end of the summer. Um, and that's what we use the Triton wear for, uh, you know, through the summer. We just started on it back in late in the spring. Uh, we picked four or five very specific data points that were focused around those things that I just talked about and, you know, built a training program that hopefully would get them better at those things. Hopefully the data would tell us they'd get better at those things. And hopefully it would translate into some faster swimming, you know, towards the end of the summer. And we also did some test sets as well to just get them thinking more specifically about exactly about those things. Cause if we're going 2100 long course on 130 they're not necessarily going to be thinking about all that kind of stuff. But when we're going 20, 25 is all out on a minute, they can really think about those specific things that we want to be focused on. We, we have the, we have the comparison video with, with Matt King. And it's, it, it's important to say two things. One, he was 49, nine, eight as a PB and hundred free before he dropped to the 40, 48, 33, which didn't win the final, but I think that he did. He, did you do that? In pre- he did that in prelims, didn't he? He did that in prelims. And then in finals, he went maybe a 10th slower and he tied. 40, yeah, right. 48, 44. He's only 5'11. He, he is, he is, he's, a, he's tiny in the big, you know, in the big man nitro world. The, but when you're watching that race video, com- the comparison from, from Olympic trials to 2022 nationals, it, it looks like he's 6'6. Six, six. It looks like he's throwing himself down the pool. He's just swimming big. Yeah. So that comes down to stroke efficiency, that, that, that metric. What, what were you seeing in the data? Was that just tracking throughout the season? Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, you know, that that's one of the data points that we use, uh, you know, with the Triton wear. And, and again, we wanted to just see some improvement. You know, I don't, I don't I'm not, I don't know that like a 10% improvement is, you know, that you're going to get something like that out of an athlete that's already that good. But if you can get 1%, like I can, I relate it to times, right? Like 1% of 20 seconds is two tenths, right? I mean, that's all, that's all I need is 1%. So, um, you know, we, we, we focus on that and our test set, you know, is something that we could really, we could compare if we wanted to compare very specifically, you know, set to set, we could, but also, you know, the Triton wear obviously is just going to compare yourself to yourself, you know, consistently as you go day to day, week to week, month to month. And we saw some pretty significant improvements percentage wise in the four to five, you know, key metrics that we, you know, that we wanted to focus on um, any, some of them, some of the guys up to 5%, um, you know, but, but I think at a minimum, they were like, you know, over one, you know, probably 2% at a minimum in, in those improvements. And that, again, that was just from probably May, maybe late April through 
July. So, you know, we're talking two months. Is there one thing that you look at one metric? You're like, you're, you just, you know, there's something you always do in life. It's a, that's a ritual. And it's like, this is the first thing you look at. Um, I do it every morning. I sit down to my desk and I, and I, and I go through the same ritual because I think these things matter more than anything else. Is there one thing that jumps out? One, one metric that jumps out that you're like, yeah, this is, I'm, I'm always looking at this. Yeah. I mean, you know, I think there's probably more too. It, it's, you know, it's their, it's just their push off strength, you know, how, how powerful they're pushing off the wall. And, and then also, you know, and there's, there's peak push as well um, that those two kind of are correlated. And then, you know, just, you know, the, the, the statistics that give you the information on how well they're carrying that speed into their dolphin kicks and through their breakouts, because especially for them, you know, and for most swimmers, I say this all the time, like, and, and we, we preach this to our entire team, not just these guys, but most people don't really think about how hard they're pushing off the wall, right? They're just, they're doing a flip turn and going, they're doing a butterfly turn and going, or, or they're starting a set and they're just going like, no, very rarely are they actually thinking about, okay, I need to push off this wall with as much force as I can. Um, and so what we wanted to see was an improvement in that, but a, just a, a pretty consistent conscious awareness of I'm, I'm actually got to push off really hard, you know, because, and then if we can make that a habit and they don't have to think about it anymore, then they're, then they're automatically doing it. And right. Like pushing off the wall with hundred percent effort compared to 80% effort takes no, really doesn't take any more energy. It's not going to, it's not going to, it's not going to make you like die in a race sooner because you pushed off the wall harder. Right. So that's something that we, you know, pretty consistently look at and, and preach as well. That's data, but pulling back out, you know, let's, let's, let's just widen the frame back out. It's, it is philosophy and it's like the difference between good and great and great and owning pieces of history as an athlete or a coach. It, it is, it's how mindful you are about all of these different skills. And it's, uh, and, and, it, and it's a fight because you, it's so easy to zone out, but in a power program, you always have to be focused. You always have to be thinking about this and, but you have to think about it at a, at a level that is so much deeper. So has this helped you focus more as a coach? Yeah, I mean, definitely. Um, you know, I think again, probably more so for me though, it's, it, it keep, I guess it keeps me on track and it keeps me focused. Uh, I don't know that it made me focus more, um, but it allowed me to just, you know, kind of stay on the path that we want to stay on and not veer from it, you know, and, and start thinking about other things. You know, I, I think that, you know, probably the trouble people coaches get into most often is just like trying to think about too many things and do too many things and make too many corrections. You know, like, I'm just like, look, we're going to take a very small handful of these things and really focus on them and make them a lot better. And then at some other point, we'll move down the line. Um, and, and like you said, especially in a power-based program and especially for shorter races when one one hundredth is, is pretty crucial, um, or two one hundredths or a 10th, you know, um, you've got, you definitely have to be thinking nonstop. And so, you know, just be what, being able to see the data, you know, help me go into every practice, just remind me what we're working on. Right. Cause we all have a million things running through our heads, um, you know, and, and we can lose track of those focuses and those things that we want to focus on. So every day it was like, all right, remember, this is what we're working on. This is what we're working. And I remind myself and it reminds me to remind them as well. Um, you know, you mentioned Gretchen, I told her, you know, totally different, but like, you know, 90% of the time when she's swimming freestyle, she comes into the wall during a set, she's just kind of gliding in with her head up. And I'm like, I'm like, put your head down every, like every day, put your head down, put your head down. And I'm like, Hey, how much did you miss the world championship team by this past summer in the 50 free? She said one, 100. And I said, put your head down <laughs> and not, I don't know that she finished with her head up in that race, but still, if you do it nine out of 10 times in practice, you're going to do it in, in a meet, right? I was at U.S. Nationals and in the, we were all staying in the same hotel. And I remember I'd go out in the morning and walk and get a cup of coffee. And she walked by me and I was like, she's just looks like somebody. She's just, she's an athlete. She's, she's tall. She walks like an athlete. I'm like, there's just so much talent there. There's so much ability. All right. Your, uh, personal insight. And I'm not asking you to give this up, but maybe you'll give it up. Back when I was competing, 
when I was racing. Uh, it was that daily grind deep into the, the I love good, being deep into the season when you're, you know, tapers far off. You've, you've done some, you're, you're, you've done your base work, you're, you're fit and you're really going after it. In my head, I was always thinking about the tiny little details. And I was thinking about how much it would psychologically crush my competitors because I wanted them to just give up every little detail. So you, you're always trying to whittle out way those weaknesses. Where do you have weaknesses? What can you do coming off being the defending NC2A champions? What, what do you work on? What's that one little thing that you can't I, tell me? <laughs> I mean, you know, I, I think that um, I, think, I think that everybody has weaknesses, right? And, and so it's hard for me to be like, this is our weakness because like, yes, we are a team, but we're a team made up of a bunch of individuals and, and they're and their weaknesses are all very, very different. So, you know, everything. So, so we're not running a program that is um, broad in general for everybody. You know, it's a very specific program that gets really specific for every single, every, every individual has their own prescription for their own, you know, uh, recipe for success, right? Everybody and, and almost everybody on our team has a different recipe because, you know, Gretchen and Kate, are great 50 freestylers, but they're very different people. They're very different physiologically. Um, you know, to take Kate and, and Alex Walsh, you know, as well, they're great IMers, but they're very different people. So they don't necessarily need to be doing the same things. Um, and they're certainly, their strengths are different and their weaknesses are different. So, you know, everybody's got to, everybody has to hone in on their own their own weaknesses and their own strengths and try and just try to make them better. So I think it's hard for me to be like, this is our weakness. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's more about, I've got 25 guys and 25 girls on a team and, and there's 50 different weaknesses amongst them all, you know, oddly enough with the guys, those sprint guys, they actually, four of them have the exact same weaknesses so they can do the same training and, and focus on the same things. Um, you know, but that's a little bit more of a rare, you know, situation. So, I don't, I don't, as a program, I don't know what our, what our weaknesses are. Um, I'm sure, I'm sure they're out there and, you know, we address them as they pop up, uh, you know, but to me, it's just about, you know, if, 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 if our team's going to get better, everybody, everybody, if our team is going to take one step forward, every individual has got to take two. Right. And, and if every individual only takes one step forward, then the program is not going to, you know, it, it takes a lot more momentum to move a, a, a big mass than it does, you know, an individual mass. You said something important and I, and I didn't pick up on it. And it, it's, uh, it's something that I think is top of mind for a lot of coaches, but it sounds like it, it is fundamental to what you do. You said, you want to protect your athlete's speed. Um, are you ever into a test set and you're like, this isn't happening. This is oh, working. Yeah. And you're just like, cut it, cut it. I don't want to, I don't want to map. I don't want anything mapping the, the neural network the way it's mapping now, this isn't working. Stop. Does that, yeah. is, does that happen? Oh yeah, it does. You know, and, and probably more often than not. Um, and for that specific reason, I don't actually give our, at least the groups that I coach, the practices that I coach, I never give them a piece of paper with the practice on it ever because of that. Well, two, there's a couple of reasons, but, but, but one of the big reasons is you know, I, I kind of like, I have a, we have a plan, right. And, and we have a practice plan, but, you know, and I try to stick to the plan as closely as possible because the plan usually works, but you gotta, you gotta know sometimes to veer from the plan or make adjustments to the plan or cut the plan short or maybe extend the plan, you know? So most of our, pra I, you know, I probably do that. I probably do that daily. Um, and sometimes it's the other way. Sometimes it's like, this is going really well. Let's do more of it. Um, you know, maybe I had a second set I was going to do later, but I'm just going to keep this first set going because it's going so well. And other times it's like, oh, this is terrible. All right. Instead of what I was thinking about doing four rounds of, I'm only going to do one. And oftentimes I don't, I also don't tell them we're going four rounds of this. I just say, Hey, we're going to do this one. We're going to do this one round. Let's go. And then we'll kind of see, go from there. Um, so it happens more often than not that, you know, things aren't maybe going exactly the way I would want them to go. And so maybe we chuck the whole set entirely. Maybe we just modify it a little bit. 
um, I'm doing that constantly. And they know, like they know that anything could change in the middle of a practice um, based on how they're looking or how they're doing, or, you know, maybe it's maybe just to set in my mind, I thought it was going to be, we were going to get something out of it that we're just not getting out of it at all. Um, you know, and, and part of that also is, is like, where are they at mentally on that day too, right? Like if, you know, if they're just, you know, if the group is just not, if they're too tired or, you know, whatever, you just got to make those adjustments. You know, I don't, I don't think sticking to the plan is always necessarily the best thing. It's when I, when I think of this through the lens of Triton wear, I, I think of, you know, you're, you're constantly, it's like a rocket taken off and you're constantly changing your trajectory, trajectory, you're correcting your trajectory as you're getting to the moon. And, uh, you know, there's this story of what happens over a season and how you improve season to season or not. It's a memoir. It is your story as an athlete. But the data, we're, we're, we're moving into a situation where the elite athletes and with coaches who are engaged and using it like you, where we're going to have a roadmap, a, a, a digital roadmap of how this was accomplished, what worked and what didn't work and why. It's interesting that you had this, the, your, your test guys for, um, you know, coming off of the spring and into long course nationals and the improvement with, with Matt King. I'm curious as to, this is where we're at in 2022. And you're talking about these tiny percentages of, of improvement. What's going to be his digital story heading to trials in 2024 in Indy? You want me to, pre you want me to predict that? <laughs> I want the data. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean. Um, you know, I, I think, again, I think the thing I like about the data the most is that it's, it's great confirmation that what you're doing is, is working. And on the flip side of it, it's also a great confirmation that what you're doing isn't working. And you wouldn't know that you wouldn't know that otherwise until it was too late, probably. Um, you know, if I'm consistently doing this certain thing and training that I feel like is going to help them be, get better at their weaknesses, you know, um, and I don't have the data to back it up, then I'm not going to know until they get to nationals at the end of the summer and they swim, you know, good and not great. Um, you know, and so I think that the great thing about the data is it just, it just allows you to know if, if what you're doing is working, if they're actually getting better at what the things that you want to be focusing on. Um, and, you know, I think that for us and, and for Matt specifically, just continuing to work on those things is only going to help him. Um, you know, I think the hope is, is that he can continue. I don't know that he's going to drop a second and a half in the hunter free again in one year. Um, who knows, maybe he will. And then he's going to be, he will be a world record holder. Um, you know, but I certainly think that there's, there's plenty more left in there for Henry to continue. To, he's, he, you know, those things, his weaknesses, there's plenty of room for improvement in those. Um, and so, you know, and I think that focusing on the, like the things that we're already really good at you can only make those a little bit better. Right. But the weaknesses you can make a lot better. So, you know, I certainly think that um, he's got a lot more room for improvement and um, you know, it's, I think that's, that's just what makes this all really exciting for him as an athlete, for us as, as coaches, you know, cause you don't know, I don't know how fast he can be, but I know he can be a lot faster than he is right now. All right. You've, you've given me a lot of time and I appreciate it. I know you're a busy guy, but I want to close out with one thing. I'm going to tell you that on our side of, of, of the pond over here, down in Austin, Texas, looking at the data, uh, Gretchen's 50, was it 50.53? Is that what she went in the hundred yard fly? Unsuited. That's what, that's where really bounced traffic. Um, did you expect her to go that fast? Or were there other swims you were like, oh, this is exactly where we need to be? Are you surprised or not surprised? What's what, what's your takeaway from this past uh, weekend with the duel know, against Florida? They, they I, you know, they continuously exceed our expectations. And maybe my expectations are just low. Um, you know, like if you take Gretchen's 100 butterfly, well, e even her 50 butterfly, she went 21.9. I thought she'd go like 22.4. <laughs> uh, I would have been happy with that and she probably would have been too um i think that you know her hunter fly you know she had been 52 low last october first semester and you know i and, and the pool record was 51 three and i kind of joked with her i'm like can you go get that pool record at 51 three and in my mind i was like if she gets that 
it's probably going to be by barely. And that would be an exceptional swim. I didn't think she was going to go where she went, but there's, I mean, there's a lot of others that like, you know, Alex Walsh and, and Ellen Nelson and they're 200 free. They both went 145. And I was like, what, where did that, like, I just wasn't expecting that, especially out of Ellen Nelson this early in the season. I mean, 145 is really fast for her. Um, you know, you have, and you also have some newcomers like Maxine Parker, who, um, you know, she went 22, two in the 50. And I was like, before that race, I, I thought, okay, I think she can go 22, but my guess is 22, seven, 22, eight, that'd be really good. And they hit the wall and you're like, whoa, what? So I don't know. Maybe we need to work harder. Right? <laughs> Maybe you're protecting the speed a little bit. Yeah, too much. You know? I, yeah. I, I, I don't know, no. buddy. The time will tell. <laughs> time will tell. I, um, it's, it's, let's, 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 let's bring it back to Triton where is there any, is there any, is there any Triton where metric where you're like, you're looking at a specific athlete where you are right now in the NC2A season and you're like, this is, this is where we're going to improve this, or I like where we're at and I like the data that I'm seeing now. Uh, but this is what I want to squeeze between now and ACCs. Yeah. You know, I think I go back to the same thing I said earlier, you know, it's the one that I'm like, I kind of zone in on every day is that, is that push off strength and peak push off and, you know, making, cause you know, you hear coaches say this all the time. At least I, at least I say it all the time. The fastest you're going to be going in any race is pushing off the wall, right? Like you, your push off power and speed, like you're not ever going to be going faster than that. So, you know, we want to be able to push off with as much of that power and strength and speed as we can. And, but then be able to translate that and carry it through, through the breakout and the first few strokes or whatever. Um, but to me, that that's just so important and I can see it, you know, like I can just watch somebody push off the wall, like nonchalantly to start a set and it drives me crazy. And I'm like, get, come back here and push off again, <laughs> you know, cause like it, it's such a, it's such, it's just something that people don't think about. You know, it's not what they're thinking about. They're, they're thinking about getting into the swim and their kicks underwater or whatever it is. But that's just something that I'll probably continuously uh, harp on because you, you got to make it. It's just got to become natural. Thank you, buddy. Thanks to Triton Wear Tech. Unleash your speed. Triton Wear helps you plan your best season. You have any parting thoughts? Yeah, you know, I think... Uh, as far as data goes, just use it. Uh, but I will, I will say parting thoughts for data is it, it can overwhelm you. Just pick, pick a few things and focus on those and work on those. And then what's going to help you the most, what's going to benefit you the most, what's the biggest bang for your buck, focus on those and then move on to other ones. Because if you look at Triton, like there's so many data points, which is amazing. Uh, and it's good because everybody needs something different. Um, you know, like I said earlier, no two people, their weaknesses are all different, right? So, you know, it's good to have that many options, but don't, don't let it overwhelm you because for years and years and years, it overwhelmed me. And I just didn't use it. You've been listening to the swim swim podcast. Stay tuned for new episodes every week. You can take swim swim podcast on the go by subscribing on your favorite podcast platform. Look for links in the description below and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos as well.